All right, guys, we're going to start. Um, everyone to come on over who's interested. OK, so hi, I'm Jason Goldberg. And this is Ben Bolin. And we're two of the founders of OST Simple Token. Um, thanks for having us here at Hashed uh, Lounge tonight. Uh, we are one of the, let's say, older projects in the blockchain space. Um, we, uh, ben has been working in blockchain for about four years now. Um, at companies like MadeSafe uh, and Monax, uh, worked in Hyperledger. Um, and we started on this project. This, uh, we had a company for about three years that over about, eight, last, uh, about 18 months ago, we turned into what became Simple Token and OST. Um, and we, hey guys, can I see you just keep the volume down a little, please? Thanks. Um, and we did uh, our token sale last year, about a year ago. Uh, we introduced the protocol. Um, and so we've been very heads down. Um, really focused on product and technology. Uh, and we're here today to actually have a, a fairly substantive conversation around a new protocol that we're uh, introducing. We introduced it last week for the first time, last week Friday, uh, in Berlin. It's called OpenST Mosaic. It follows on the OpenST protocol that we introduced a year ago. Uh, and OpenST Mosaic is a scaling solution for Ethereum. Uh, and we'll talk about that today. Um, and yeah, let's go. So uh, basically, we talk about three things. Um, the first is uh, put a little of this in kind of the, the, the context of blockchain economies um, and um, uh, what are some of the barriers to mass adoption of blockchain technology. Uh, and then Ben is going to go through a very detailed explanation uh, of the OpenST Mosaic uh, protocol uh, for scaling Ethereum. Please. <laughs> yeah, I can just go back. That's no, 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 I, I, fine. I'll, it's okay. Good. That way I can see what I'm doing. So uh, this picture here is uh, from 1439. It's of the Gutenberg uh, printing press. Um, and the reason I start with this is putting the kind of historical context of where we're at with this current digital revolution. The Gutenberg printing press was the start of the uh, industrial revolution and the information revolution. Um, and it had a profound impact on the spread and sharing of knowledge, information. It had a profound impact, an impact on changing the way uh, relationships um, between people uh, and also the creation of paper money um, and institutions as well and governments. Um, and for about 500 years, uh, we were on kind of this path based on kind of printing uh, until uh, the digital revolution, um, which started in 1989. Um, and 1993 was the first uh, basically usable browser, also conveniently called Mosaic. Um, and this was the Netscape Mosaic browser, which really touched off what we currently think about as kind of the modern day internet, um, which uh, if you think about though the internet and blockchain and how they come together, um, we look at blockchain is not, you know, a lot of people talk about Web3 and we do think the Web3 movement is very important, but we look at this as a continuum uh, that's kind of started with the digital revolution um, and Web2.0 to Web3 is kind of uh, a major kind of step change, um, but it's continuum, kind of a continuation of the internet, the digital revolution, um, where we've seen this transformation in just the last 30 years uh, from the transformation of knowledge with the World Wide Web. Uh, to relationships uh, with social media, Facebook emerging, uh, for instance, 2004. Um, and then more recently, um, as we've shifted from analog to digital and from one to many in terms of relationships, to many to many, uh, we have the emergence of blockchain starting in 2009, uh, smart contracts in 2015 with Ethereum development, uh, tokens, ERC-20 tokens uh, just last year in 2017. Um, and we're still at the very, very kind of beginning, if you think about an historical context of this digital revolution. And so we talk about the dApps and the DAOs of the future. Um, there's been this heightened expectation that it's going to happen very, very quickly. A lot of it because of the cryptocurrency craze and kind of people wanting to invest in this new technology um, and being able to invest in liquid assets from the very, very beginning. Um, one of the unique things about uh, blockchain is it's the first kind of, let's you know, say, like information revolution where, the, where you're actually dealing with programmable money. Um, and that's changed the dynamic and how people particip are participating in it. Uh, and, um, but we see this as very early in, in this life cycle. Um, but if you think about the progression of it, it makes logical sense. If you take a step back and think that the thing about the, the digitalization of society, step one was to get everyone and everything online. Um, and then once we did that, we then put a supercomputer in everyone's pocket. Um, so you then layered on uh, mobility, GPS, uh, the ability to do anything anywhere. 
Um, and then we start to redefine relationships. Um, and then the next steps, we start to redefine money, redefine institutions. Um, and that's when you think about the blockchain kind of web three revolution is kind of how do we take what will start with the internet and go on to redefining the way, you know, with, with money and, and with institutions and all about empowering new economies um, and redefining what economies are. Today we think about economies, we think about government controlled um, kind of economies, the GDPs of countries, but we have these uh, communities developing and merging online over the last you know, 15 years, which are you know, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, billions of people who are organizing together, and they're creating new economies as part of the blockchain revolution and new forms of government, um, unlike any that we've ever seen before. Uh, you think about the phenomenon of cryptocurrency and blockchain is there's millions and millions of people who are saying for the first time in the history of society uh, as we know it, that maybe there's more than just the, nation, the national currencies. Maybe there's digital currencies. Maybe there's people's currencies. And maybe it's not just the national governments. Maybe it's governments built around communities um, and new, de new definitions of institutions. Um, and so that's a really exciting kind of next you know, phase of this the question is how do we make it happen and what's, gonna, what's impeding it from happening? Um, all these great images that I've shown so far are actually from a company called Unsplash. Unsplash is one of our partners at OST. Um, and Unsplash is the world's largest uh, photography repository. Basically, it's a utility for anyone to use photos like this uh, free of charge. Um, and uh, I use Unsplash as an example because what they want to do is create a new economy in a decentralized manner around photography. Unsplash has one billion API calls per month. They have eight billion photo uh, views per month, uh, hundreds of millions of downloads per month. Uh, they're embedded in major websites such as Medium and Trello, uh, Quora, and Unsplash looks to the blockchain to say not just how do we do transactions on the blockchain, but how do we take this community that's developed around photography and rethink money, rethink institutions, and rethink how do we create an economy around, around that community. So if you think about it in perspective, we're still really, really early in this blockchain revolution. Um, and here, for instance, is to put into perspective the entire number of crypto wallets in the world, so the people, unique people in the world who are estimated as of a couple months ago to own a crypto wallet. And we say own a crypto wallet like they have a private key. Um, so we're ta not talking about people who maybe are having custodial somewhere else. Is about 25 million people around the globe. Um, and you think how much that pales in comparison to other technologies from the Web 2 era. Um, so for instance, Unsplash, which I mentioned, they have about 70 million monthly users. Um, and then you have, uh, you know, a much larger apps like Twitter, Instagram, WeChat, Facebook. You know, it's still really, really early in the emergence of, uh, of Web3 and this new, uh, this new programmable money-powered internet. So what's stopping us from making it happen? Um, so we look at there's three factors um, that are going to be required in order to bridge this gap. Uh, to mainstream adoption of blockchain technology, uh, both by consumers and businesses. Uh, the first is developers. Um, and so it's, you know, forums like this. We were at the Upbit Developer Conference yesterday in Jeju. Um, the Ethereum developer community is fantastic and growing very, very rapidly. But we need, you know, an army of millions of developers around the world who are building on these technologies and also simplifying them, um, making them easier. It's great that the developer community is, you know, very well, very much in large part committed to open source and blockchain. Um, but what we need is, you know, an army of developers who are building this technology and then we need that to continue to get easier and easier for more developers to jump in and get involved. Uh, the second thing we need is scalability. Um, and this is very similar to the history of the internet. Um, if you remember the picture I showed of the Mosaic browser, um, it was ugly back then. The user experience was pretty ugly because the internet itself wasn't very scalable back then. Um, the pipes were very thin. Uh, the protocols were, you were limited. Um, and so we're at a phase right now where we have a number of companies that are building protocols. And a major step right now is to build scalability. We need to get to thousands and tens of thousands of transactions per second, billions of you know, users being able to be actually functionally participate on a blockchain. And you need that scalability before you get to the next step, which is usability. Um, that, you know, the, you know, think about all the amazing graphic designers, user experience designers, uh, GUI designers, you know, there's nothing with them to build experiences on until you actually have a scalable blockchain. Um, and until you have scalable systems. And that's the, the kind of the one, two, three is we need a developer community, we need scalability uh, of the systems, and then we need to build great user experiences on top of that. 
Um, and that's user experiences at all levels. It's user experiences at how developers can access code, and, uh, how they can participate in uh, you know, user repositories, access APIs, SDKs. It's how uh, businesses can use uh, you know, dashboards and wizards and frameworks in order to integrate blockchain technology. Um, and it's also end users and how we make things much simpler, whether it's owning a private key or using a wallet or transferring a token. All this is going to need to get a lot, lot easier. Um, and it's going to happen in this sequence. So, that's what we've been working on at OST. Um, and that's what we started about 18 months ago on this specific project. Um, this thing about how do we first bridge the scalability gap um, for both apps and dApps. When I say apps, I mean mainstream apps with you know, tens of millions of users like the Unsplash of the world. Um, and dApps, you know, the new apps of the future, who are just starting now and will be emerging, who want to also scale. But they both face this same problem, um, scalability. One little aside, why are we building on Ethereum? Why are we focused on Ethereum scalability? Um, really three reasons. Um, the first is, you know, the smart contract framework of, of Ethereum is what's enabling this programmable money, um, which is a very powerful concept, um, building logic and code um, into every token transfer. Um, the second is Ethereum as a network actually really works today. Um, it might be slow, um, but it is very secure. And the proof of work mechanisms today actually are, are very secure and very good for, 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 for their purpose today. Um, they're going to get better with Ethereum 2.0 and then after that Ethereum 3.0. But Ethereum works today, and so we're building on a network that works today. Um, and then it is the strongest development community. So you go back to where I was a couple of slides ago. Uh, you know, everything has to start with having developers rallying around the technology in order for these things to take hold. And right now, the strongest development community uh, in the entire world in blockchain is all building on Ethereum. Um, and we're very, very, very proud to be part of that. Um, so as I said, the problem we're trying to solve um, when it comes to scalability is one for mainstream apps. Um, they want to get part of their business on a blockchain. So we have, for instance, amongst OST partners, so our company's partners that we've been working with and signed over the last contractually over the last uh, year, um, they amount to over 300 million end users. Um, and they want to bring their transactions on a blockchain. They want to create new economies with, those, um, those, you know, with their users. But they can't today because the blockchains don't scale. Um, and then the dApps of the future, and we have many of them that are working with us today, um, and many more that want to work with, whether it's our technology or someone else's, they also face the same problem, how do you scale? Um, and so what we've been focused on doing is how do you provide an on-ramp um, for the existing apps and enable scalability for the emerging dApps, and to do so now, not, you know, not waiting two or three years or five years for, you know, th for the next phase, the next phase of the technology, to figure out what can we do on today's uh, blockchain on today's Ethereum um, to provide scalability. Um, that's what we're going to walk through uh, in a couple minutes. So I mentioned last year, uh, a year ago in September, we introduced the OpenST protocol. Uh, the OpenST protocol was, is basically a protocol for taking, uh, staking value tokens on Ethereum um, for minting utility tokens on auxiliary chains. And what this enables is first any, uh, basically any company say Unsplash, which I mentioned, is to run their billion or eight billion per month monthly transactions um, and run them on a public blockchain but not congest a public Ethereum. Um, so it enables any app to kind of run, at, run their token transfers with their own branded token on an auxiliary chain without congesting public Ethereum. Uh, but still keeping it on chain. And so this was a major innovation we did last year on enabling any app to create their own tokens based on the OST token. It also enabled us to, to, to do so while retaining the smart contract framework. Um, so these are not private chains or permission chains. Um, this is on public blockchains that are just not on public Ethereum, but they are Ethereum-based chains. Um, and it also enabled us to create uh, both you know, from the protocol as well as tools on top of the protocol to enable basically not blockchain economies for non-blockchain companies, to enable any developer to be able to use the APIs and SDKs in order to mint their own tokens and start running transactions uh, on the OpenST chains. So that, uh, and that's also, it enables not just mainstream apps, but, but distributed apps to, to use it as well. And so this was what we introduced a year ago. Um, and since then, we've been building this. Um, and what today we're going to be introducing is the OpenST Mosaic protocol, um, which is the next step, which is when you have all these apps that are running uh, transactions on these auxiliary chains, um, how, do you, um, how do you make sure that they can, excuse me, how do we make sure that they can 
finalize those transactions back on public Ethereum so that you can and do so asynchronously so you can scale to tens of thousands of transactions per second to billions of users in an efficient manner. So I want to go through just two things in terms of where, where we've been on this. Um, so if you go to OST.com, you'll see uh, basically we have something called OST Kit. It stands for the Complete Blockchain Toolkit for Business. It's a, so it's an OST toolkit. Um, and it's a dashboard that businesses can use to set up and manage their own token economies. Um, this is something that we started at the beginning of 2018, and we've been doing a series of alphas uh, with developers to set up their token economies, integrate them into their apps. We have a very robust uh, developer uh, kind of center, um, both on GitHub for the protocol, as well as at dev.osc.com, where it's APIs and SDKs for plugging, basically, you know, set up your token economy, set up the actions, uh, integrate it into your app, and start running transactions. Um, and where we're at on this in terms of right now uh, is um, we now have about 120 external development teams who have uh, integrated and built, um, integ basically built integrations with OST Kit into their apps on testnet. And so they've been running transactions on testnet where basically you say an app developer has an app or a website and an, act, an action or event inside their app or website triggers a, a token transfer on the blockchain. So they set up various transaction types. Um, and so about 120 developers have gone through a series of, of alphas with us, um, and they've done this on testnet. And then as of last week, we have 12 of our partners who have now uh, integrated, and so they staked and minted on uh, mainnet as well. So what we did is we moved uh, version 0.9.2 of the OpenSD protocol and the current version of OST Kit, uh, the APIs and software, uh, onto mainnet, and we had development teams um, that have uh, that have integrate basically done a first stake and mint on mainnet, um, and we have OpenST version 0.9.3, um, which was completed a couple months ago, and our team is currently working on OpenST version 0.9.4, um, which is focused on uh, enabling. Um, Decentralized key management. Um, so, how do you enable million apps with millions or tens of millions of users to efficiently, uh, safely, and with a good user experience have their users acquire tokens, earn tokens without everyone having to um, control uh, or write down their, their private key? And we'll talk about more of that in the future, as well as uh, token rules engines to enable uh, smart contracts. Um, and where we're at today is we're introducing, as I said, this next step. OpenST Mosaic, the scaling solution, at several events. Uh, we started at ETH Berlin last Friday. We did the Up at Developer Conference uh, yesterday um, and today here at Hash. And we're really doing this, and we're doing a lot of detail. So everyone brace yourself. We're going to go into all the details of OpenST Mosaic because um, we really want the, uh, community feedback uh, on this. And the last thing I'll say before I turn over to Ben uh, is um, just a huge thanks to the entire uh, OST team. We're 65 persons, uh, four offices. Uh, New York, Berlin, Hong Kong, and India, Pune, India. Um, and uh, the team is working tirelessly on the project and uh, also early backers for the project, such as Hash, who supported us from the very beginning. Um, I first met Simon and the team in August of last year, um, and especially the fantastic OSD community who's been participating in the alphas, uh, challenging us on the technology and giving us feedback. So we're going to do for the third time uh, ever, and third time in, less, in the last week, we're going to walk through the details of OS, OpenST Mosaic so you guys can get a feel for what this new technology is all about that we're working on. Oh, last thing. Uh, we also have a neighbor. Um, uh, so we've just recently, as of last week, started to really um, push our Korean community. Um, we've been very heads down working on the product. Uh, so Ben and I work in Berlin, and we've been, you know, our teams are very much as focused on uh, development. Uh, and uh, we set up a neighbor last week. We put our project roadmap on the neighbor yesterday. So it's uh, uh, blogneighbor.com slash OSTHQ. Um, and we're adding all of our content onto uh, the neighbor on a daily basis now. So we encourage you to take a look at that. And we'll be doing more in the, com in the community here as well. So with that, I turn to Ben, who's going to walk us through Mosaic. One yeah. Uh, yeah. You could share these slides, or should I take all of the pictures? Yeah, I will share all the slides. We we publish all of our slides. We um, the slides from the upgrade conference yesterday is almost the same size. Um, we already published them. Um, we'll send this out to everyone. Feel free to rip them, use them, whatever you want. 
Um, and our GitHub repositories, um, you know, play with the code as well. Go ahead, please.